So we now have a good understanding of probabilities, simple probabilities. And we know that given this figure, we could calculate all of these probabilities earlier. Already we've calculated them. But now let's say we are given this person who is Christine Cushing, apparently somebody connected with design, I think, in Canada. So we know that Christine Cushing is a Canadian. So we now want to find out what is the probability that she is a buyer of our product. In other words, we are asking this question, what is the probability of somebody being a geek buyer? Now, with no other information, just saying somebody is a buyer, we already know that that is 0.33. That's what is shown here. But we are now giving additional information. We are saying not only is this person a buyer, no, sorry, uh, not just no information, but we are told that this person is a Canadian. And now we are saying, given that the person is a Canadian, what is the probability that she is a buyer? This kind of thing is called conditional probability. Earlier, all of these things that we did here, these were all unconditional probabilities. This is a conditional probability. So there's a condition attached to it. Here the condition is the person is from Canada. So what is the probability that this person is a buyer given that the person is from Canada? We can do that easily because if you look at Canada, we've got uh, 4 plus 3, 7 plus 3, 10 cases totally in Canada. So for this probability, since we are already told that the person is Canadian, we don't have to look at any other part of the diagram. We'll only look at the Canada part of the diagram. So that is this leftmost rectangle here, the Canada part of the diagram. So we are concerned only with these 10 cases. And out of these three cases, there are three people who are buyers. So given that somebody is a Canadian, the probability of them being a buyer is now 0.3 or one third. Whereas without any condition attached, the overall probability of somebody being a buyer was one third. Now it's 0 0.3. That is three out of 10. So that's the probability here. So you can see that conditional probabilities could be different from the associated unconditional probabilities. So this is just explaining it. We are showing that that's the region we are concerned about, which is the Canada region alone, nothing else. Out of that, there are three buyers out of 10. Therefore, the probability of given Canada, the probability of somebody being a buyer is 0 0.3. Once again, just note the notation for conditional probability. In conditional probability, we put the probability and probability of what we are looking for, we put that and then we put a bar and then put the condition after the bar. So in this case, the condition is Canada. So that's given and therefore that restricts the base that we are considering only to this rectangle. And then we look at, okay, out of this rectangle, how many are buyers and what is the total number of cases in the rectangle that tells us the probability. Okay. So here, once again, it's work for you to do. Calculate the probability of somebody being a non-buyer, given that they are from Canada. Probability of somebody being a buyer, given that they're from the US. And probability of somebody being a buyer, given that they are from Mexico. So those are three conditional probabilities that you could calculate. Okay, so these are the answers. Again, I hope you pause the video and try to find the answers before moving on to this. So the probability of somebody being a non-buyer, given that they're Canadian, of course, is seven out of 10, because we saw that the probability of buyer is three out of 10. Again, if you look at the diagram from first principles, there are seven non-buyers out of a total of 10. Similarly, probability of somebody being a buyer, given that they're from US, is four out of 17. There are a total of 17 US cases, and four of them are buyers. And there are nine cases from Mexico, out of which five are buyers. Okay, so total is 36, as before. This is just the same data. Okay, so that's just some more practice with calculating conditional probabilities. Okay, so again, just to emphasize, Without any conditions, the a priori probability of somebody being a buyer is 0 0.33 or one third. That is called the a priori probability. That is without any additional knowledge. And then given additional knowledge, the probability can change. It does change quite drastically in this case. For, for Canada, it remains 
pretty close to the original value but for the us and mexico the value changes pretty drastically from the original value okay so this is just a term called a priori and of course the corresponding other term is called a posteriori or a posterior probability okay so sometimes the same diagram that i had drawn is represented in the form of uh, a contingency table this is what is called a contingency table showing you the frequencies in a tabular structure and this represents exactly the same information so given this we can then calculate all the probabilities conditional probabilities and other probabilities in the same way this is really just the same information as before okay but now one thing to look at is in this kind of data given the fact that the country is told to us it makes us capable of making a better prediction of whether somebody is a buyer or non-buyer because of the fact that the information about country changes things quite a lot therefore in this example we can look at the country as a predictor or input variables a variable and whether or not somebody is a buyer that's the target variable so again we are just matching this back to our terminology of data mining where we've got a bunch of predictor variables and then we've got a target variable that we are trying to predict and here are input variables using which we are trying to get the value for the target variable so the target variable is whether somebody is a buyer or non-buyer and the input variable or the predictor variable is their country so i'm just recasting the same thing that we have looked at uh, in the form of data mining terminology so if you just looked at this diagram it didn't look very much like a data mining scenario whereas it in fact is because you're really talking about i've got a predictor variable and i've got a target variable what is the solution what is the value now of course we can keep on adding more variables so in this case i've added one more predictor variable whether a person is a male or a female okay so now we could answer the additional conditional probabilities for example for christine cushing we could now say this is a female from canada so that's the condition what is the probability that she's a buyer okay so canadian female what is the probability of being a buyer mexican male what is the probability of being a buyer and so on okay so for example for canadian female once we see once we restrict it we know that there is a total of four cases who are canadian females these are the only this row represents canadian females a total of four out of which two are biased two are non-biased so the probability of being a buyer is 0.5 whereas for a canadian male probability is only one out of six 0.16 something okay so again you can see you can calculate conditional probabilities but the point is the conditions here contain multiple variables it contains a country as well as the gender so you could calculate conditional probabilities like this as well so here we've got some examples so christine cushing once again canada female and what is the probability that she is now a buyer given that she's canadian and female so we can see that we calculated it there are two canadian female buyers out of a total of four canadian females so the probability is 0.5 so once again i'm giving you here some more things to think about so what does it calculate the probability of just being a buyer uh, given this which is of course I'm talking about american male what is the probability of somebody being a buyer and here we are talking about uh, this is uh, apparently the first lady of mexico recently uh, she has become the first lady of mexico the wife of the newly elected president and what is the probability that she would be a buyer okay of course obviously these are the rich and famous they're not going to be buying products that you and i make but uh, we'll forget the rich and famous part and just think about their attributes in terms of our predictor variables okay so i would say just look at the table calculate your numbers and then continue the video and let's look at the answers okay so here the probability is three out of ten because there are 10 us males in the population or in our data 10 us males out of which three are buyers and of course he being a male uh, his probability will be three out of ten okay so for mexican females 
there are four Mexican females, only one is a buyer and therefore her probability would be one by four. Okay, so it's all fairly straightforward. I'm just showing you again that the same thing can be extended to many, many variables. Okay, so the model here is country and gender are the input variables or predictor variables. And we are using that to predict the probability of somebody being a buyer or the probability of somebody being a non-buyer. Okay, so it's a classification. So of course, for a given country and gender, you would calculate the probability of being a buyer, probability of being a non-buyer. And then you will say, well, whichever probability is higher, I'm going to put that person in the class of buyer. Okay, so in this case, in which class would you put this person? Would you put Barack Obama? Would you classify him as a buyer or as a non-buyer? Well, we've just found out that his probability of being a buyer is only 0.3, which means his probability of being a non-buyer is actually 0.7. So we should classify him as a non-buyer, as we should do for her as well, non-buyer, because the probability of being a non-buyer is higher than the probability of being a high buyer. And therefore, we'll classify them with the majority probability. But this time, this is not the naive majority probability because we are taking into account additional information about country and about gender. Okay, so here we've got this information and what we are talking about is that this is a data mining model. You could think of this as a predictive model because you've got a bunch of people and let's say you've got not data for 36 people, but let's say you've got this matrix for a thousand people, properly sampled thousand people. Well, that's a lot of valid information. And you can use this, the relative ratios from that large population or from that large data set or sample. You can use that as a basis to predict future cases, right? So that is your training data set. Let's say instead of 36, you've got a 2000. So that's your training data. From that, you've calculated all of these proportions and frequencies, and then somebody comes along who is an American male. Well, you can predict his probability of being a buyer from the data that you've got. You've learned from this training data. You can use this to predict something for future cases, just like we've been doing, right? So in that sense, this is a perfect model, predictive model, classification model, really, okay? So this is really a classification model where the inputs are country and gender and the target is buyer or not. Okay, and this approach is called as the exact base approach. Okay, it's the exact base approach because we've got all the information available and we are able to make predictions from that. Okay, but this is not the algorithm that we are actually going to study. It, it'll be fine if this algorithm were applicable, it's a really good one to use. But for reasons that we'll be looking at shortly, this approach, unfortunately, cannot always be used. If it's possible for us to use this approach, great. We can use it. That's the end of it. We don't have to go further into any data mining approaches. Okay. This approach is called the exact ways approach, and it's a little bit optimistic to see, to think that this will actually apply. Okay, and of course, this applies only to categorical data. All the values we have here are categorical, right? Country and gender, both categorical. And of course, the outcome is also categorical. For any classification, the outcome has to be categorical. But for this particular model, uh, your predictors also have to be categorical. Okay, so exact base requires categorical variables. If you do have numerical variables, the numerical variables will get binned. I'll probably talk about the process of binning a little bit later in the course. It can be used for very large data sets. It's very computationally very, very easy. And it has many applications. Okay. Now, the important question is, why does this table have 12 cells? Now, you may say, well, it has 12 cells because it has 12 cells. What other explanation can you give? Well, another reason to, uh, another explanation for saying that it has 12 cells is there are three countries, there are two genders, and there are two outcomes. Okay, three times two times two, that's 12. Okay, three choices for country, two choices for gender, gender, 
and two choices for class giving us a total of 12 cells okay so here let's think about this just explore a little bit can you think of any additional variables that you might want to add as inputs to the model so right now we've got country and gender so think of any two additional variables that you can add to this model that is two additional variables that could help predict buyer or non-buyer a little bit better more information might help us to predict better so any two additional input variables that you can think of once again i hope you did some thinking so what you're seeing here is i thought of a lot of additional variables that depending on the kind of product that you're talking about race might be a good predictor or hair color eye color education level income height many of these could be additional variables that you could add on to make them good predictors but of course if income and height are uh, numeric then we cannot use them as they are we will have to convert them into categorical variables by the process of binning we'll talk about that as i said earlier okay so you could add any number of additional variables if you want but what happens when you add additional variables is you run into combinatorics which means suppose we added eye color and there are three different values for eye color let's say brown black and blue and then we added education level and we've got five different levels for education could be you know didn't go to school graduated high school undergraduate graduate and then did a phd those could all be the five different levels right those could also be used as predictors so if you added these you now have three choices for country two choices for gender that is six three choices for eye color 18 five choices for education 90 and then two target choices buyers non-buyers a total of 180 cells okay so that's the point here that this number of uh, different combinations grows very rapidly 